everyone. Now, this little talk, we're going to go through an awful lot of the equations for waves. And we're going to start with the speed of waves. This is our primary equation for calculating the velocity of a wave. Uh, v for velocity in meters per second. Lowercase f is frequency. If you recall, frequency is how many of something per second in the metric unit hertz. And this is our Greek letter lambda, and that is wavelength. So we're going to use this equation to determine the speed of wave. So what determines the speed of a wave? Well, it's going to depend upon the type of wave, um, a sound wave versus a light wave, for example. And the reason I have a picture of thunder and lightning is this is a great example. Um, when you were a child, I don't know if somebody taught you, when you see the lightning, start to count and until you hear the thunder, because the thunder is caused by a rapid compression wave being produced by the ex rapidly expanding air produced by the hot lightning. And if you count the difference between the lightning and the thunder, you can use it as a gauge to determine if the thunder is, if the lightning is getting closer to you or if it's receding away. But that's a perfect example of the fact that the light travels almost instantaneously and the sound travels much more slowly. What medium is the wave traveling through? Is it going through air? Is it going through water? You can see underwater, so you know that light can travel underwater. Um, and you can hear underwater to some extent, so sound can travel down there. So the medium's going to have an effect on the speed. And what are the conditions of the medium? What's the temperature? What's the density? Um, we're talking about water. What's the salinity? All of these things are going to have an effect and we have to take those into account. So we're going to begin with talking about speed of sound. This is the equation we're going to use to calculate speed of sound. And speed of sound is going to depend on temperature. When air is warm, sound is going to travel faster. Uh, there is more kinetic energy in the air, so the individual particles are going to compress much quicker and you are going to have a faster moving compression wave. Then if it's cold, if it's a cold day, there is a lower amount of kinetic energy within the gas, and that sound wave is going to travel much more slowly. So in this equation, V is the velocity of the sound in dry air, so this will be, have to be adjusted. Uh, we're going to stick to 331, but if you became an acoustic scientist, of course, you're going to have to adjust that for humidity. Uh, degrees Celsius is the temperature on that particular day. And what does that 331 represent? That is going to represent the velocity at zero degrees Celsius. So the velocity of sound in dry air at zero degrees Celsius is 331 meters per second. So let's go ahead and use this calculation to determine the speed of sound in air on a dry day when the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So velocity is going to be 331 meters per second times the square root of the temperature on that day, so 20 degrees Celsius. Why are we adding it to 273? Well, adding it to 273 will convert it into Kelvin. So we have to have absolute temperature in Kelvin and then divided by 273 Kelvin. So actually, by doing this addition, both temperatures will end up in Kelvin and these units will cancel. When you do the math, Add first, then divide, then square root, then multiply. And when I put all that through my calculator, I got 342.9 meters per second. It's pretty simple, but you got to keep your order of operations correct. Add these, then divide, then square root, then multiply. So not a hard thing, but that order of operations can fudge people up. OK, speed of sound. Um, speed of sound is going to change. Now, uh, we use 343 at about 20 degrees Celsius, which is about 68 Fahrenheit on a dry day. Um, water is about 1490 meters per second. Now, that's fresh water. And iron is a little over 5000 meters per second. On your physics constant sheet, I give you some speeds of sound, so you can refer to those. 
The more dense a material, the faster sound is going to travel and it's going to be slower in less dense material. Now the reason I have this picture of this small child with their ear to the ground is you may have heard that old expression, if you want to know what's coming, put your ear to the ground. Well, where did that come from? Well, because of the fact that if you want to know if the trains are coming, uh, you can put your ear to the railroad track, or in the Old West, if you put your ear to the ground, you can tell if the cattle are going to be stampeding, because of the fact that if it's 5,000 meters per second uh, versus 300 meters per second through, this is through a solid and this is through air, it's going to be over 10 times, over 10 times faster. Uh, you're going to hear the sound a lot sooner and you're going to get a chance to get out of the way or if you're a bad guy robbing the stage, you can get out of the way as well. When you're talking about the speed of sound, um, the human body uh, has an average speed of 1540 meters per second. That's the speed that is used very often in ultrasound or DMS. Uh, the frequency, depending upon what you're using in your DMS, uh, 2 megahertz to 15 megahertz. Oop, I think I abbreviated, overly abbreviated there, megahertz. So what's the length of an ultrasound wave? Well, let's go ahead and do this calculation. Velocity is frequency times wavelength. So wavelength is going to be velocity divided by frequency. So wavelength is going to be velocity. Velocity inside the human body, 1540 meters per second. Which one of these am I going to choose? Well, I'm going to randomly choose 10 megahertz. Mega is 10 to the sixth hertz. And if I do the math, I end up with a 1.54 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. So how big is that? Well, 10 to the negative 3 is a millimeter, so it's 0.154 millimeters. For a lot of pink people, across their pinky, their pinky finger, is about one centimeter. So that means there are 10 millimeters across your pinky finger. Um, and if you take one of those millimeters and divide that into 10 parts, one of those is about the size of a ultrasound wave. So you can get an awful lot of detail uh, using these ultrasound waves and that's why we use them. All right, that is going to do for this one and we're going to come back next time and we're going to talk a little bit about speed of speed.